Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome Hi, to uh, Abstraction Figure as Source, Part One. Uh, and we'll be doing this for the next four weeks um, for two hours in the morning, Tuesday mornings. And then Tuesday afternoons, we're going to be taking the material that we cover in the morning and use it for a source material for an abstract painting in the afternoon. Um, a few things um just if you have if you're not familiar with navigating uh the zoom meeting rooms you should be seeing uh up in the top right there could be a speaker view or gallery view uh the speaker view you're just going to be getting what is going to be showing up in my speaker view which is right now just me if you hit gallery view, you'll see all of the different windows. And I believe Zoom, they did an upgrade and now you can ping, you can double tap on any of those windows and it should get bigger. And there are uh, a few different camera views that we have here. Um, we have one, we have a model with us today that Lonnie will be with us for these four weeks. That's Lonnie over. I think you can see her through here. Let me see if I, this is, I'll put her on the main view here. That is Lonnie, you wanna wave and say hi? Hi. <laughs> That's Lonnie. And um, let's see, so now, let me get back. That's me. So I believe you'll be able to, uh, to double tap and there are three different views so you can coordinate it and i'm going to also be changing on my end for the recording uh what is going to be showing up in the main view um please unless you have a question please stay muted just because the ambient noise can get distracting um i think that's it um if you have uh, particular questions as we go, you're welcome to type them and put them into the chat room. Um, if something's burning, unmute, let me know. Um, so we're gonna be drawing, I'll be drawing this morning and uh, a couple of different ways of drawing uh, the figure. And then I'll cover um, a, a way of working with, uh, reproductions, paintings from art history of the figure, different ways of taking the kinds of things that I'm gonna be covering this morning and using it in relation to uh, copying from uh, paintings uh, throughout art history. And so the, we have all of these paintings of the figure that can become source material for our work in the afternoon if we don't happen to have uh, someone sitting around at home who, can sit for us. I mean, that would be great. So I think that's that covers sort of the preliminary. Um, okay, so I'll get started on this. So the first the first way of working is pretty straightforward. It's how to organize the figure on the flat surface to come up with a, a reasonable set of uh, proportions and you know that it looks like you know someone is sitting there or lying there or, or what have you so that's the first way that I'll try to explain uh, going through and we'll be practicing that and you know over, over these weeks and coming up with different kinds of um, poses to use as our source material for the for the abstract painting so, and, and then after I go over that we'll explore a different way of working as well so, um, I usually am working in graphite uh, when I do work in this first way of working, but I'm gonna work in charcoal, it just shows up better in the, uh, on camera. So, I'm gonna try to figure out how to organize this, this figure. Here's Lonnie, she's lying, uh, lying there on the couch, let me get this one here. And let's see, can I, I'm gonna lower that a little bit. 
Oh, no, it shows, well, I think that shows up enough. Okay, that's fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is imagine like an envelope that would kind of encompass her whole situation. Let me go back over to this one so you can see. So I'm imagining knee to head to hand to elbow to knee to feet to knee. So I'm imagining what would this sort of shape that would encompass her whole situation, what would that look like? And then I'm going to start to um, uh, um, think about, well, what are these angles? So I'm looking to divide up now this uh, envelope. into a set of angles of her body, her situation. Now, I'm fairly familiar with this, and so it's, it's coming along pretty easily. But I want to give you some tools to think about uh, how to organize it as you go, because it, it's complicated and it may not just come this easily. So, okay, I'm getting something like that. It's very rough, but you get the idea. Now, one helpful way to organize the figure is uh, what I call alignment. What's across from what? What is under what? What am I referring to? So, for instance, her elbow comes just to the right of her head so that this would be the side of her head and her elbow is just to the right of it and it's a little more straight up that way. Um, or her elbow comes through where her, her left hip and ankle are. So that would be like here. So it would be a little bit higher. I made it a little too low. Or um, her right elbow is right where her, the top of her forehead is, about there, and just under the knee. So the knee would be a little bit higher in relation to the elbow and the forehead. Yeah, so I'm trying to coordinate where things are, these different points, in relation to each other. Um, let's see, like her feet, the t the, where the toes are, are just under that elbow, so it's about there. It's a little bit, a little bit higher, but basically that's about right. So I am organizing using alignment where to place the, you know, the, uh, you know, the elbows and the knees and the head and this sort of thing. Um, another helpful way of organizing the figure is through uh, angles. So, for instance, I've got her side here, her right side. And, you know, I want to try to understand, well, what's this angle? 
and I can put my uh, here. Why don't I bring you over this way so you can see? See if you can get. Is this going to work? I don't know. I'm I'm placing a vertical next to like where her uh, pants and her blouse meet, her top and her and her pants there, and I, in that in relation to that angle, I've got a vertical, and so here. I'm going to put up a vertical and I'm going to try to imitate this angle in relation to this vertical. So I'm looking at angles and that's how I could see, oh, this, you know, the angle of her head, it was, I, I had made it too, too steep. It was more upright or looking at the angle of her, of her arm. Oh, it, it pulls out a little more out this way. So another, useful way of organizing along with uh, alignment is angles as a way of just trying to uh, figure out you know you know like oh this this goes up here but underneath her head it actually isn't quite as steep so it's doing something like that and then actually she seems to sit better that way. And this comes over to her arm. And this, her, her, the top of her left thigh, I'm seeing, so it is under her elbow. Of course, I'm not sure how far away her elbow needs to be from her right leg. Um, well, maybe I should measure because I really haven't even measured yet. So I'm gonna measure. I'm gonna measure the space in between her elbow and her, I mean proportion, I haven't measured proportion. Uh, her elbow and her, her thigh, and just compare it to, oh, maybe, or how many heads? Let's just do the head. Chin, chin, to, chin to forehead. So here's like chin to forehead would be like that. Or maybe it would be, well, yes, yes. Chin to forehead would be like that. How many of those go in between her elbow and her knee? One, a little less than two. So it would be one. So I, her elbow is a little bit too far out. It's about there. And if that's the case, then I need to bring her thigh out this way. So then her and her thigh is, if this is where her pants meet her blouse, her thigh would be about there. Yeah, that makes more sense than where I had it. So then it's here. Um, we have pelvis coming up that way, and this is here. So we're starting to organize the figure. Let's see, an eraser would be good. Um, so this is, and then. If this is here, inside of her thigh would be about here. So this all gets raised up that way, and then this comes up that way, and then this is here, here, up, here, whoop. You with us? Lonnie. Yeah. Hi. Your legs are moving slowly. Oh, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> and this is coming down here. Something like that. All right. So here's, I mean, I'll, maybe I'll go a little bit further and then we'll do another one. Okay. Um, la, 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 la. This is here. This is the side. 
So I'm looking at angles, I'm looking at alignment, I'm looking at proportion as a way of organizing the way the figure is situated. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to get this hand in here. Go here. Whoop. Here. Here. A little, little bit longer. All right. That looks funny. Let's see. Oh, let's see, I'm getting this, is this, is that, well, what are the, it's about right. Maybe the head needs to change slightly that way. But this length seems to be about right. Maybe the hand, and here's the wrist, there we go. I should step back, just like I always say to all my students, step back and take a look. The head looks small. It looks a little small here now, huh? Let's see. Uh, let's see. If this is the arm, this is her shoulder. Up. Oh, so the head is on this side. There we go. I need to move it over slightly. Got a pillow. Working a little better. All right. So we're going to do another one. Okay. Different pose. I'm going to get another piece of paper. We'll try this one more time. Let's see, maybe I'll go to, um, oh, we're on that one. Okay, well, that's good, that's a good view. I thought we were looking at this one, but we're not we're looking at that one. Right, cool. Maybe, let's see. All right, so I'm going to start again with the envelope. Um, so we've got head to hand to foot to foot uh, to hand to head. And oh, you guys can see that, right? There you go. And um, although you can't see all of her, her arm there. All right, but you get the idea. Um, and then I start cutting in. And here's, here's the head and shoulders. It's coming down to the arm. Uh, and Side to hip, hand, 
I don't know if I'm gonna get. Nope. If this is the, I need a bigger piece of paper. If this is the foot, then I've got to go up. And this is this is hips. It's gonna be smaller up here. Let's see. This is foot up to leg, and then top torso. A little better. And coming down. Let's see. Here. Coming here. Over to wrist. Something like that. And we got shoulder coming down, upper arm. And this is coming across pretty horizontally. The hand, let's see. And then her right leg is going up this way. And it is, the angle is almost vertical coming down to foot. And the foot is coming across from her shin of down here as it goes down. I see the angle going down this way. And this angle coming in for the calf and her ankle and her heel and the inside of her thigh from her other leg and that's that's a thin let's see this way here so starting to coordinate it let's see um let's see do we want to look at it from a, a different angle or just keep, no, why not? let's see what is this Um, well, you can see it from that angle. So you can see more of the of her of her pose there. Um, okay, I'm gonna go back to the other one a little closer. Whoops. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to uh, work with the alignment a little bit. And I've got her chin is under here. So I think I need to move this. I'm going to move her leg because I've got her chin at this spot. But this spot where her thigh and, cat and lower leg meet is a little to the left. I'm going to move it over. So then it would be here. So we've got it here and then here, here, here this coming down this way. Her, her heel is just by where her ear is, something like that. So down around, around here is the heel. So I've got to move this a bit. And let's see, here. Oh, that actually makes more sense. It's always nice. And we got this and we got I'm going this way. Oh, uh, looks like I'm going to lose some toes. Um, then we have her right leg coming from here. And up and coming up this way. Um, let's see. I'm getting, where's her? But this is her left thigh. About, about here to her. Coming up here, up to her arm. Okay. And now let's see. Her wrist is coming through the lower part of her red top, about, about there. That's about right. Okay. Um, her right wrist is right above her toes. Well, that's good. That's working. Hopefully the toes are in the right place. And then I've got 
this hand coming. We've got this angle for the back of the palm, angle for the fingers coming down, and we've got the thumb coming pretty horizontally across, something like that. Um, this leg, the right leg, is pretty much, well, this is pretty vertical. So I'm, I'm missing something slightly. Let's see. This comes out here and here. I want this. And then this is coming. And this comes down this way. And then we have the instep coming down. Something like that. Uh, okay, let's see. How are we doing? Um, I'm going to, maybe, so this is, this is organizing a figure through flat geometry, which is what we normally do. We are trying to understand how do I translate the three-dimensional situation of this person, this body in space into a, onto a flat surface and organize it in a way that is convincing of a figure. So, you know, using angles and uh, alignment and proportion, you know, I can, I can measure the head, uh, chin to crown. Uh, and we got one, two, three, four, five to the ankle and about five and a half to the toes. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five to the ankle and about five and a half to the toes, probably more or less. I got that right. Uh, and we can do, right. So it's proportion, alignment, angles in relation to a, a vertical and a horizontal and coordinating and setting it up on the, on the paper. Okay, I wanna switch gears and uh, do this with a different set of questions, okay? We're gonna do another, another piece of paper, another pose. Um, before I move into the next set of questions and exercises, does anyone have any particular questions about uh, this exercise that we just went over? You can unmute and ask me, or you can, uh, let's see, maybe I've got a chat, nope. So you can either type in a chat, or if you want to unmute and ask me just through the computer, that's, or the Zoom call, that's fine too. Or we can just go on, that's fine too. Also, I will be, um, ah, Stuart, this is your, one second, let me read this. Is this your usual first step for working towards abstraction? Um, My, so Stuart just asked me, is this my usual first step towards working abstractly? I don't actually think of what I do as working abstractly, strange as that might sound. All the work I do, I'm doing from observation. So my way of drawing and painting changes, but it's all in relation to an actual perceived situation in front of me. So, no, this isn't the way I work. But clearly this is a way that a lot of painting has occurred and still occurs, and we'll talk about that. And I'm gonna talk about de Kooning, for example, or Gorky. Or... So this is, this is one way of working. Okay. 
So if the last way of working is pretty traditional in terms of how do I organize the three-dimensional world onto a flat surface? And we're looking at two-dimensional terms. Um, what's the angle? What, what's the proportion? Uh, where do these points line up in relation to each other? All of those things are two-dimensional plotting devices, ways of uh, getting the three-dimensional situation translated into two dimensions. What I'd like to do now is, is, is a different attitude. This has to do with exploring in a more three-dimensional way. Uh, I'll explain as, as we go now. Um, about like a little curling up stuff. Yeah. 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 Great. Beautiful. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is instead, it's not so much about organizing in a, um, what you might call an optical image. How would this look as a photograph? Right. If I took a, if I took a snapshot, what would this look like? If I flattened it onto a screen, what would it look like? Now what we're doing is we're exploring in an imagined three-dimensional attitude. What happens if I sort of sculpt the figure? Think of Giacometti uh, or some of the drawings uh, of Henry Moore or uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a more felt kind of exploration. It's not as visual or optical, not as flat. Uh, please show the pose before. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Which, let's go to. How about this one? So there's the pose, okay? And I'm going to be uh, exploring uh just the feel of her form in line with charcoal and let's see where is a good view to give us that's that one let's go to this um and maybe i can lower it, it. so let's see Lower this so you can see more. That's as low as we get. Uh, it's not, let's see. We don't do it. That's not bad. It's kind of good. Okay. So we get a sense. Maybe I'll move this a little out of your way. Better. Yeah, that's not bad. And maybe turn this maybe a little more of this too. Okay, that's pretty good. All right. So, should have brought some water here. Okay. So, I'm just starting in her midsection, just because it's kind of in the middle of all of her form and, and imagining sort of going around, you know, her ribs to her back or across her, her hip and over her thigh. And so, so, you know, and this would be her rear here, but really I'm imagining such something that's more like a, a, a cross contour, uh, sort of an imagined tactile proje projection. Uh, trying to understand her form through the feel here. You can see that through the through the feel of uh, imagining if this line is sort of sculpting around her arm, or this is going around her torso, up 
up this way to, to her back. Here's her, her, um, her shoulder. And, and in a way, uh, let's say uh, this way of working is, I'm not measuring, it's more felt, it's more intuitive. And I can, you know, also maybe extend it to, the, you know, here's the couch behind her, and then imagining, you know, going up this way. But I'm, and then here, kind of coming down here. Uh, here's her, her upper thigh and the back of her calf. So my, you know, using my fingers, it's charcoal. That's sort of sort of convenient because it's all smeary, you know. And so there's this, there's a real sculptural quality to this way of working. Let me try to, I'm gonna, well you can see on that, maybe, well I'll, I'll, I'll bring it in to the other camera too. So you can see it. Let's see. So, get some of that, let's see, come in. So you can see some of the way I'm working there. Um, of course, now you don't see her, but you, see, you can see this. Um, and it's 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 a it's a it's it's more felt. It's in a way, it's less visual and more tactile, more sculptural, less painterly. Although that's not right. It, let's say it's less um, less geometric. Uh, but more, uh, more, more material, or more felt, more, more physical. Here's the shoulder up to the neck, and here's her head, feeling back across her cheek to her ear, to the front of her head, up to her hand, and feeling across. Imagine you know going back. I mean, this would be the pillow here. And she's kind of leaning. So, so questions. Well, can you see me? Questions of um, mass, uh, uh, physicality, weight, space. Uh, these kinds of uh, engagements come into play more with this way of working. Um, the other would be more like geometry, angle, um, proportion. This is more, these are physical engagements that I'm trying to get a handle on, literally. And, you know, people have different sensibilities, different temperaments. Some people are more inclined this way than that way one way or another. Uh, some people like a mix, 60-40, whatever it might be. And it's, it's, it's helpful to, uh, you know, and also when you look in painting, you can see, oh, there are different inclinations among the great painters. Uh, Rubens is, is more about mass. Rembrandt is more about mass. Caravaggio is more visual. Uh, in a way, Desenio and uh, Florence is more about the geometry, and Venice and Colore is more about this kind of sense of physical. Eh, it kind of breaks down, but you, more or less, in a way. You could be argued with. You know, and I'm looking at how her knee is, is coming up. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. The way her knee is coming up. Uh, her, her left knee is coming up against her right calf in the way, you know, the way this, this comes in. It's, there's something, there's a, something physical going on that's, that's interesting to try to, you know, feel into here. Or the way, the way the, 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 the seat of the couch uh, meets up to her rear here. You can, you know, there's something physical occurring and that 
that just gets interesting as a as a as a physical situation. I think the chin is lower. Let's see. Back. Uh, la, 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 la. Oh, this is here. This is shoulder. So I'm using that other what we you know what we were just covering in terms of angle. Uh, um, uh, proportion. So I, I'm bringing that in because it felt, it, it, it seemed something felt disconnected. The head didn't feel connected to the chest. That was a physical um, sense. Ooh, things weren't connected up physically. And then I went and used some of the, what we were just using in terms of proportion angle as a way of, oh, this is what I'm missing. So there's a way that the, the, the 2D and the 3D sensibilities can interact as a way of getting the image or the, or the drawing or the painting to kind of like sync up. You know, sometimes it may be that the, uh, the proportions are right, but there's something missing and there's a sense of physicality that I might be missing. All right, we will do another one. Okay, set something up. How you doing, Lonnie? Good. You're good. She's good. Lonnie's good. No worries. It's a cloudy day over here in Colorado. Uh, Jordan, this is Stuart. Yeah. You might hey, have Stuart. Another question. No, go for it. Okay. Good. Um, so uh, thanks. This is great uh, demo so far um Sweet. would you say well I, I guess you sort of touched on it just in that last little bit where you said the the head didn't feel like it was connected on connected right, but yeah yeah so would like how much are you thinking of these sort of 2d proportional kind of thing like it seems to me that must be informing what you're doing whether or well, not it's like sort of conscious it, right it, well it's certainly in my toolkit as i'm working sure but uh, not so prominent, really. I wanted just to sort of explore the the way the forms are feeling and the sculptural quality. Uh, but there was something here that felt flat. So it was like, oh, I'm missing a sense of physical form. It's like, oh, well, let me use my two-dimensional toolkit to take a look here and see what am I missing. But, you know, that doesn't, it's, it, it isn't so much that it came into play because I thought, oh, it doesn't look accurate. Mm -hmm. It could be that. In other words, I could say, hmm, objectively, that doesn't look like a normal person. So, I, and I want objective accuracy. So, I'm going to measure. What, what I was saying was a little different than that. It was, oh, it feels flat. I'm missing the fullness. I'm going to take a look and see what am, I, what am I missing. Oh, the head seemed to be disconnected from the chest because I used my, I was just measuring a little bit. An another way to look at that, say, is, so, you know, Giacometti. So many of his heads seem out of proportion. They are out of proportion. They're tiny compared to the bodies. He, he isn't concerned with objective accuracy. He's concerned with, finding a way of marking according to his experience of the form. And, uh, and it got distorted because that made sense to him. So it really depends on how you want to use it. it, it I don't, you know, there's no one way here. And for me right now, I'm using it more as, as a, just a helper for the three-dimensional exploration. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, we're going to do another one. I'll get another piece of pen. Whoa!
Yeah, it's good. Mm, maybe, let's see. Uh, let's see. Your legs are almost behind each other. So, yeah, good. Perfect. Great. Okay. Um, I need water. I need some water. Summertime. So let's take what, what we were just talking about a little further. Um, and let's see, I'm going to give you the pose. So you can look okay, over there. Let's do that. And um, let's take it a little further in terms of just physical exploration. So that last one, I was working, but trying to get it more or less in proportion and things in place. Now, what if I just don't even really pay attention to what's happening on my paper? I'm just going to play with the sense of uh, tactile pro projection. What I mean by uh, tactile projection is, let's see. Oh, no. Let's see. Just, what I mean by tactile projection is, um, let's see. I wonder if I can, well, then you won't see her. Um, yeah. But can you guys, you guys are able to, to move and, and see different uh, views through your own. Is that working for you guys? Double tap? Or you're not able to? Or you don't know? I, I doesn't, double tapping doesn't do anything for me. I'm not sure if that's everyone else's. No, is, no one's able to switch their camera view on your own? No, I can't either. Well, I'll research it. We, we were able to do that. Yeah. Maybe do we Zoom double is, tap? Do we yeah, double tap? I thought on double the... tap should work, but maybe they stopped allowing it with their upgrade. That could be. Yeah, I did have to upgrade for this class, so. Uh huh. Maybe yeah, all, well, everyone does now. Uh, everyone, they did. They did. Uh, all of their uh, software got upgraded uh, at the end of uh, the month, um, and maybe we can't in the meeting room. Maybe maybe everyone doesn't have the same. Um, functionality of moving the camera views around. I, I don't know. I'll look into it again. Um, okay. So now I'm going to, I want you to be able to see this. Um, hmm, but it'd be nice to be able to see her too. And I'm right in the way. Let's see. Um, or maybe I'll switch to the other view. Let me see. Um, let's see. If this comes well, but then I'm going to be in the way of the drawing if I'm right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's try. I want you to see. Nope. Let's go back. Let's go this way. Okay. And. Um, well, maybe it is just what it is. Okay. So I'm going to, well, gosh, maybe, well, see, I'm left-handed is part of the deal. It's part of the problem. Uh, I bet all left-handers say that. Um, well, kind of. That's nice, except I'm not in the drawing. I mean, I'm not in the picture. Let's see. Can this go higher? Let me see. Uh, I'm well, that's not bad. I can't see her. <laughs> All right, one second. Let's move this back slightly. That's, that's good enough. 
I think that's good enough. Now you can see this. You can see her. I can see most of her. Fine, let's go. Okay? We got, we got this. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to be looking out at her. I'm, not, I'm going to ignore the proportion. I'm going to ignore it, right? It doesn't matter. I just want to go and imagine a tactile projection. That is, imagining that I'm sculpting with the, with the charcoal, or I'm sculpting with my hands here, just the form. And if I need to, I'm going to go blind if, it, if I get too, too concerned, right? You know, a lot of the time when we're working, we are, uh, we're keeping a tight rein on the situation. And let's say we want accuracy. Well, then that's appropriate. In other words, I'm measuring and I make a mark and then I measure and then I make a mark and then I measure and I make a mark and I want it to be really realistic or accurate. Fine. That's a tight rein. But maybe I just want to like explore and see what happens. And, uh, you know, so then it's really helpful maybe not to pay attention so much to what happens on the paper. I just want to go and explore, right? I think of it in a way like uh, swimming. Like, uh, you know, uh, if, I'm, if, I, if I'm doing like, what is a freestyle? And I, I do a stroke and I breathe and I stroke and I breathe and I stroke and I breathe and it's all very tight. Or I can snorkel. And then I'm just, my head's in the water longer. And I'm just hanging out, right? And just letting stuff happen in the drawing or painting. And then there's scuba, where you're just down deep and you just are hanging out for a long time. And you're just not concerned. So there's different ways of playing with the situation. And, uh, you know, particularly if we've spent a lot of years doing skill development, trying to get our chops, we may be, uh, or with the figure, you know, we want to get it accurate. And so we're keeping a kind of a tight rein on the situation and it makes it hard to play or explore or uh, discover in a certain way. So here, what? Uh, I'm sorry, is this a... Is this an okay time to ask a question? Sure. Okay, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but... Um, no, you're fine. I just, I wanted to um, uh, sort of springboard off of what you just said about the skills sure. development. Like, I'm sort of very yeah. much in that um, right. point right now, like bu right. building up these observational skills and doing right. relatively tight drawings based right. on the correct, you know, anatomy and proportion and yep. stuff, and trying to introduce an element of play. Yep. Um, so... Well, um, can you can you describe what you mean by tactile projection exactly? But but also sure. when you're saying like you're um, you're hanging out and just sort of exploring, what are you exploring? Okay, so that th those two questions actually go together. Tactile projection means I am projecting in my imagination in the drawing as if I've got a real sense of tactility as if I'm actually sculpting or feeling her form or if it's a still light, how the bottle feels or the space in between. I'm imagining a tactile experience. Of course, it's not, it's just a flat piece of paper. So it's a projection. Does that make sense? It, the, uh, I'm projecting <laughs> the three-dimensional experience. It's not really a three-dimensional experience. It's a flat piece of paper. Yep. But I'm projecting that. And we all, all paintings that give us a three-dimensional experience are, to some extent, more or less, having some kind of tactile projection. A, a stronger sense of physicality is going to have more tactile projection than a flatter painting. Matisse, not so much tactile projection. Giacometti, lots of tactile projection. Is that making sense? Yeah, I'm, I'm, okay. just, um, I'm just wondering what it is that, like how that informs your mark making. Well, here, um, here's, 
here is uh, this is what was I drawing? Uh, th let's say this is her her left side, and I'm imagining sort of going around her torso. I'm imagining the feel of her form across her chest. Now there, it's not that the folds on. I'm not trying to draw the folds. I'm trying to draw an amount uh, like a like a cross contour that goes around the form. So when I'm marking, I'm not trying to just do the, the two-dimensional uh, angles and shapes in a traditional way. I'm actually marking as a way of like, if I was sculpting with wire, or I'm sculpting with line, think of Giacometti, what would that feel like? Or, or look at uh, Henry Moore's drawings. So that the the painting or the marking gets in gets impacted by this sense of physical, as opposed to visual optical, which is flatter. Okay. Okay. And in terms of exploration, like playing, so I'm I'm allowing I'm going to allow the proportion. I'm going to allow the visual accuracy to get distorted because right now, I don't care. I want to just play with the tactile projection and see what happens as a way of opening up the situation for my own experience. And then it'll probably feed into the uh, abstract painting later, hopefully. Great, thank you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not going to look at this. I'm going to try not to look at it. And I, it's as if I, I'm, I'm imagining kind of sculpting. This is the, the black pillow. This would be her arm, her head. Whoop. That's what happens when you don't look at your drawing, huh? Uh, there's more tape. This is that, that beige pillow, her head, her chest, down to her hip, her, her leg coming across the uh, couch here, the leg coming over. And I'm not. I'm not looking here. I'm just sort of just, just scribbling away in some kind of imagined physical way. Like a wall. And something is happening here, right? Uh, do we know, you know, and then maybe I want to come in and, and make it a little more legible or maybe i just yeah that's kind of cool i mean that seems a little bit kind of crazy there but you know sure but it's it's a way of it's sort of imagine like you're beginning to sculpt and you just are taking on that clay and just kind of like throwing it together you know uh not worrying yet it doesn't matter it was just just getting warming it up or you kind of like the abstract play of throwing it together and that that kind of works all by itself All right. How you doing? Okay, good. Um, so, yes, new pose. And I'm wondering whether we want to move to, well, let's do, yeah, let's do one more of these.
So maybe, maybe this one will kind of mix and match. And we'll start with this kind of open play and then maybe try to get a little more accurate. See what does that do? Maybe go, go back and forth a little bit more. All right, maybe water. Okay, let's see. Careful. Great. So I'm just going to start out with this kind of tackle projection play. Let's see, can you all, you can see, I think. Yes, uh, I'm sort of in the way of the drawing. Um, maybe you like can't that. see so much when you're drawing, at least last time. Uh, no, you couldn't see last time when I was drawing? Not your hand so much. Uh, well, I'm a, yeah, my head's in the way. Um, An unfortunate placement. <laughs> uh, let's see. What about... We're going to lose Lonnie a little bit, but you can see... You want to try... Should we try this one now? Maybe back and forth a little bit. Yeah, okay. that's great. I'm gonna use a chamois too. Uh oh, work myself. So I'm, I'm just, you know, using my arm, using the gesture as a way of exploring her form in a physical way. So I want to say something. While I was kind of scribbling around like that, I just looked at where her upper arm is back here, looked at the lower arm down here, and put them into alignment. So I just used that as a way of just bringing, like I didn't know where this arm was in relation to this arm. And I just, oh, it's right underneath it. And I just went there. So most of what I was doing was just working that line, feeling the form. And then it's like, oh, I used that two-dimensional optical thing. Oh, that's underneath that. Okay, now let's say I want to, okay, I want to actually get a little more uh, uh, accurate, let's call it. So, okay, uh, now I'm just going to slow down a little bit and kind of go back and forth, look back and forth at my drawing a little more. And, oh, her, her, her head kind of comes over at this 
if, if this is here, then here's her shoulder, and that's her arm. Uh, her shoulder is here, and then her head would be here. So I'm uh, going back to some of those questions from those first exercises of placement, measure, alignment, angle, and bringing those things into play into this kind of messiness that I've conjured up here. You know, it's like, you know, you can think of it like a, like you're, like you're mixing music and you have different kinds of sound, treble, bass, whatever it is. And you're, you're bringing in, oh, a little, a little more two dimensional accuracy. Oh, a little more three dimensional, you know, tactile projection or however you want to describe it, just as a way of sort of going back and forth and sort of getting this mix going. Because, you know, really what you want to be doing is something that's of interest to you. And, you know, we may not know what that is for a while. It may take us a while of, of exploring and experimenting to see, you know, well, how do I like, how do I like to paint or how do I like to explore? Or, Jordan, that comment is so timely for me right now. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, it's, you know, a lot of the painting journey is about getting our skills. We need them. Let's say I'm, you know, I want to play music. I, I need to learn scales. I need to learn how to play this thing. But let's say I want to play jazz. I've got to learn how to improvise. How, what does that look like? How do, you, how do you learn to improvise? How do you learn to play? How do you learn to, to conjure accident because it gets interesting? You know, and after, after we spend years trying to get things accurate, it's kind of like unlearning. It isn't exactly unlearning, it's, it's not really, but it feels like that. You know, that starts to get, for me, that's, it gets interesting. Can you guys see that image? I don't know, let me see. You know, uh, it's, it just starts, this just starts to feel interesting, her, the way her form is, is coming about. So now I'm, I'm even, you know, I'm using, you know, uh, the eraser to pull out some highlights. I'm getting interested in the value relationships as a way of describing the, the form.
you know, so this is, this is my back and forth that I'm, you know, finding right now, sort of going back and forth between, you know, feeling, you know, a little more of the sense of form or losing it or trying to measure or alignment or angle, just, just a kind of a back and forth kind of deal. That's just what's happening in this moment. Do you tend to make a mess first and then organize it later or, or it really start with a sometimes blocking? I mean that's fun uh -huh. um, it depends it could be you know if it's a situation that is really not clear to me how it's working maybe I'll just hunker down from the beginning and try to measure and figure out what am I looking at you know what is this it just depends it also depends on Where's my energy? You know, I'm, maybe I'm just feeling slow and I want to take my time. You know, I, sometimes I really like just keeping it slow and measuring and it's more contemplative and kind of grounds me. Sometimes I got a lot of energy and I just need a mark, move the material around. Yep. And I, I allow, so I allow my particular state of energy to definitely inform my way of working. Sometimes I might start one way and realize, oh, I need to blast it open or, oh, I really need to slow it down. Or So I just follow that. I mean, one of the things that starts to happen is you find this range of ways of working and then you're more like coordinating them like a conductor, uh, allowing things to come and go energetically in different ways. Anyway, there's something interesting going on here. Yeah. Okay. Then we'll put a pause on that one. Okay. Um, hi. Let's see, where are we? So maybe uh, let's switch gears. I want to, because I assume a lot of you don't have Lonnie uh, or someone like, can you see it? There you go. Uh, what's that? Someone to fall asleep in front of you, right? That's right. So um, one of the things that I'd like to uh, explore together is how to work with uh, reproductions, unless you've got some great old master paintings hanging in your, uh, of a figure in your living room. That'd be great, for sure, for sure. But the museums are closed. We've got the internet, we've got books. So I wanna do that. I wanna show you, oh, let's go through that for a little while. What, what might that look like, okay? Um, all right, you're welcome to hang out, okay? So, I'm going to uh, do a little screen share and then um, give a, do a demo. Are there any questions? Oh, we've got some chats here. Let me see what we got. Um, okay. Ah, okay. Let's opt for what we do. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to do a screen share, and let's get this up first. Um, let's see. That a little bit later. Okay, let's do this. Okay, um, back to Zoom, back to Zoom, screen share, and this guy. Okay, 
So here is a, a titian of uh, Diana. And uh, the, the gold coins, I believe, are uh, some kind of manifestation of Apollo. And where Apollo is falling, you can use your imagination. And uh, you can see here the pose how Titian is setting it up. And um, it's all subtle and not subtle. Anyway, beautiful painting, beautiful pose. And uh, this is her form here, okay? And I did a couple of uh, drawings. Let me make this a little bigger. Uh, this one, I tried to understand more in a straightforward way uh, the angles of the limbs and the proportions. How you know how is her head on the pillow here? How you right? It's actually that's a little too up. Uh, that's a little too vertical right there. I saw afterwards. But in this one. You can see I'm, I'm trying to get a feel of the form more sculpturally. And the feel of the, of the sheets and the bedding and the way her head is lying on the pillow, right? A little more physical. So this, I took the, uh, the painting by Titian and played with it in two different ways. Both the, that first way we were working and then the second way we were working. And just did a, just did a study. Here, let me, let me show a, a couple more. Uh, let's go to this. Okay, so here's another Titian. This is, what is this? A Bacchanal of the, oh, what's their name? something at Amstrins or something. I, I'm not up on this particular mythological story, although it, it looks pretty great. We, we have, uh, you know, they do seem to be having a good time and frolicking and drinking wine and sunbathing. Here we got this guy sunbathing up in the back. Um, and also it's sort of, oh, look, the little kid here is relieving himself right in the middle of everything. And it, aside from, you know, whatever story and all of that that's going on, just the way the forms are organized is just sort of amazing. The way all the rhythms of all of these bodies and fabrics and uh, the trees. I mean, just extraordinary that the way you could do that, or he could do that. This is an early titian. And let me go and just, I'll show you, this is, this is my kind of engagement with it. It's just one, you could just keep going so much. And I'm trying to explore, you know, the forms and feel and organize it. Uh, it was hard, actually. Um, but you can see it's, it's fairly free form. I wasn't getting real hard nose about it, but I was really trying to get the things to, to be where they are. And here's that old guy up, up in the back there, in the tree. And I didn't, I didn't finish it all up, but enough of it, you know, for the, for the sake of this, these rhythms here. I'll go back to trying to explore the way Right. So those are two different ways of, of drawing or two different uh, motifs. One is a, a whole bunch of folks and you're exploring the rhythms of the bodies together. And one would be one form more like what we were doing now uh, in, in our session here with, with the figure, with, with line. And um, so both of those uh i would suggest uh doing that um taking you know finding and there are you know there are lots of I, I'll, I'll put together and send out an email but or in, in the next in, in the in the one i sent out this week of uh, some suggestions but there's so many 
uh, wonderful painters. Uh, and it doesn't have, they don't have to be nudes, they can be clothed. Uh, you know, look at Piero della Francesca and uh, Giotto and uh, uh, Titian and Bellini, uh, Caravaggio, Rembrandt, Rubens, uh, so many wonderful painters of, of the figure throughout art history. And, um, uh, you know, call them up and, or maybe you've got books and uh, start playing with the form, both in terms of, you know, trying to figure out accurately what are the proportions, how does this work? Uh, and then also just playing in terms of, you know, imagining, uh, uh, exploring this, this figure uh, uh, in a more, you know, free flowing or tactile way. Let's go to stop share. Okay, great. Oh, we got you. No, but we were just seeing you, watching you snooze. Oh. But she's okay. She's allowed. She's allowed to snooze now. We're gonna. I'm gonna move and do something here, and we can let Lonnie rest. Okay, she wasn't. All right, I'm going to set something up here. Are there any questions? over any of that material that I just covered right now. We're gonna, I'm gonna do a demo of, of that, but I, in case you have questions for, at this point. Also all of this, this is, this is being recorded, right? This is being recorded? Yes. This is being recorded and um, I will be editing and uploading the video and sending out the link uh, later this week. So, and you'll just have that access. Okay, water. Okay, so I thought I'd pick another petition. He's a, he's a particular fave. I think he might be my desert island painter. You know, you're stuck on a desert island. One painter's work, who are you gonna pick? I think it might be Titian. What, what should we, you think I would have chosen by now what to draw now? How about, how about Venus and Adonis? That's, that's always a, a group. This guy, this one. There's a few versions of it. This one's in, in the Prado. There's one in the National Gallery in uh, Washington, D.C that I spend a lot of time drawing. I don't know if it's in here. They're really similar. I mean, seen one Venus and Adonis. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna, let's see, can you, can you see? Just maybe I'll lower this a little bit. And if I draw, mm, it's over here. Mm, is that gonna work? Maybe. I'll try to do it up here. 
Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to focus on these guys. I'm not going to do the whole painting. Just the way the, the bodies are engaged. Okay. So I'm looking, I'm using the, the, uh, that envelope deal that we were talking about in the very beginning head to shoulder down to hand to foot over to her foot her her knee her other uh foot knee uh that's that's her let's see that's his head head to hand uh, something like that and then this is going to come like maybe this. This is a little higher. Coming up this way. You've got. So I'm I'm aligning right. I'm on a C and I'm looking at the angles. Is this working? Yeah. Yes. I think so. Right. You can see. Uh, so here's his arm coming up this way, I'm going up here, arm coming up here. Her head is right underneath his right arm. She's looking up at him. Th this, this is an interesting story. Here's a goddess, uh, Venus, uh, goddess of love really is interested in this guy. He's a mortal, mortal guy. And, you know, she's hitting on him. And he just wants to go hunt. It's like he's kind of clueless. He's, he, his dogs, he wants, he wants to go. She's, he's not interested. Kind of crazy. But, you know, people, right? Think about it. Here we are. Uh, la, 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 la. So this is coming here. This is coming down here. Am I losing it? Maybe. Let's see. Um, this is up here, coming down here. Um, maybe that's too much. Oh, yes. Let's see. This is, I went too low here. Here, this is coming across here. That's good. And then this needs to be a little higher. Okay. That goes up higher. Goes up something like that. And let's see, this is underneath here. So that's up there. And then this is under here. You see that? So this is here, here, here. And then this is up there. This, this is thigh, this robe, that way. So it's it's like a jigsaw puzzle. You're you're finding out, you know, where the where are, are all the pieces in relation to each other. This comes here. Like not too low, and then we've got her hip. So this is here, here. And we've got the, la, 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 her right thigh is further, the knee is a bit further out than the hand. This is the hand. The knee is going to be out here, and then her sh right shin and foot are coming up that way. I don't know if anyone actually can be in this position, but it looks good on the canvas. Something like, is that right? Jeepers, creepers. Let's see. I mean, in terms of his drawing, 
I think it might go lower a little bit this way. And again, angles, alignment, the heel to the edge of her buttocks under right the same line. It goes across to his knee. So maybe his she's like here. You can see the robe is going right there too. And then she's kind of across to the knee coming down. You see the knee is under his right cheek. Whoop, I made it a little too far then somehow. Let's see. Maybe maybe here, bring that and then down here. So bring and then so this I need more of an angle. This is underneath the shoulder this way. So that was too wide. And this comes up that way. Oh that helped. Gives a little more movement to the whole thing too. He's on his way. He's cuckoo. Uh, let's see. The ankle is under again under this shoulder. This ankle here. Uh, we got a we got a thigh and a, and a ankle and a and a foot. If this is the knee, hand up. It's coming this way. Not straight down. This is here. That's a serious bicep. And here, and then cutting down to the hand. Something like, like that. And then we've got, you can see this, this thing is starting to happen. It's kind of crazy. Crazy unit that they're making visually. Or physically even maybe. Although they do seem to be moving in opposite directions there, the way the legs are set up. This is her hip to her thigh. Um, where's her heel? Her heel is underneath her hip. This is where her heel is. This is her buttocks here. Up here that the crease is under this shoulder a little bit, a little bit there. Okay, and then this cuts, cuts in. Ah, and then she's got a little more tilt. That worked. Okay, right. You see, I'm aligning. It's all it's all set up for that. I'm trying to understand. Well, what's where and what's across from where and. It's a nice way to figure out the relationships of the forms. And they're doing that as they're composing, right? As they're trying to set up the, the, the picture and the image. They're not just getting an accurate body. In fact, the bodies may be out of proportion, but they are composing beautifully. I mean, her head is small for her body. That is one small head for this body. Feet are a little small too. Uh, it's not that he didn't know. <laughs> it's, it was choice, I'm sure. But, uh, but there it is. So this is an example of, uh, you know, uh, Trying to figure out the angles, proportions, setup of the figures in relation to each other, just these two figures right now. Right? Questions about this before I move into another version? Questions? All right. So um, maybe down here, you guys can see, right? Um, I'm going to do this again. Of course, you guys can't Let me move this over. Uh, uh, should I do it in my right hand? No. Maybe. Uh, you can't see. 
Uh, maybe up here. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. You can see it, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did a bunch of these drawings uh, in the National Gallery of ju just this relationship of their of their heads. I mean, it's just spectacular, my God. Just the way they're looking at each other and kind of missing. He's just kind of missing it, you can see. <laughs> He's just it's like, I wanna go hunting. And her yearning, oh, unbelievable. Her expression is just something else. It was, um, I think it was a few years ago uh, when the, um, they had the, uh, the Cezanne portrait show was on and I flew out there to see the portrait show. And of course, there's so much amazing painting there. A bunch of drawing. So, you know, uh, this is more, you know, gestural, uh, tactile, sculptural. Did I say sculptural? No, gestural, sculptural. But you know, also looking, oh, that's underneath that, and oh, here's the head, and, you know, so using those things, but insert, it's just, you know, as I go along, and you don't even need to, you could just kind of go, right? Like we were doing. You know, there's something so emotional about the setup too. And, it, you know, so I, working this way, it kind of allows me to get a little more felt into the marking and just into the situation. You know, as this was a little more analytic. You know, it just depends on where you're at and what, where, how you want to be working. How are we doing time wise? We got a few more minutes here. You know, I'm not even, I'm not going to do, a, I'm not going to get to all that, but you, you know, it's like, oh, okay. But uh, here, I've got this thing going on and just their, their involvement. her head, gazing up to her Adonis, he wants to go with his dogs. Great hairdo. Those goddesses really can throw together a good hairdo.
All right, you get the, the gist on that, I think, here. Oh, la, 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 la. There you go. Give you a little close up of the. Oop. Here's Sisyphus over here. Look at that one. That's intense. It kind of feels timely for where we are right now, I think. That's quite something. Look at that. My God. So there is definitely, right, there's some kind of physicality about, you know, uh, it is, you really see that in the late work. I mean, the late, late work where Titian is, seems to be using his hands as he's painting, like, like physically, like tapping the painting. Okay. Um, do you have questions about this? Jordan, um, do you, are you considering value at all or is it just, uh, no, I'm not, not, yeah. not now. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm just trying to get a feel for the forms and in two different ways and, you know, just getting the geometry and here getting the geometry. And in this one, just getting the sense of feel and it's, you know, it's certainly not getting, I mean, oh, uh, I did use value to some extent, mm -hmm. but as a way of clarifying the form. Right. Right. The form is getting muddy. And so it's like, oh, it's lighter, you know, as a way of, well, where is that arm? Yeah. Other questions? Anyone else out there? There's a, can you talk about posting our sketches? Yes, be happy to. So um, there is a, a Facebook members only page that you're all welcome to participate in. Um, I will be going, I don't get notifications. So I just have to keep on going back and saying, Oh, there people are applying or, you know, requesting to be members. And then I just approve it. And then you can, you can post and comment on each other and that sort of thing. You're also welcome. Uh, if you don't have a Facebook account or you, you're not interested and uh, you're welcome to just, uh, send images to me, uh, uh, an email, um, uh, and, uh, I'll respond. Um, and I would, you know, we'll need the engagement with the figure, uh, to start, uh, coming up with different, uh, source material for the abstract painting that we'll be starting this afternoon. Those of you that are continuing in the afternoon and, um, you're also welcome to use old drawings or old paintings of your own that you've done from the figure. Um, but there's lots, I mean, there's, there's so much out there. That's so wonderful. And, um, oh gosh, yeah. Uh, you know, in all, all the hundreds of years of, and then it doesn't have to be Western either, right? There's all kinds of stuff from all over the world. Um, but we have this wonderful tradition since the time of the Renaissance with the figure. And before, in a different way. Um, what else? Let's see if we've got. Jordan, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, can we also use someone who's willing to sit for us, or do you just want us to? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You're absolutely, you know, you, if, if you've got a live person who's willing to sit for you, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and see if you can, you know, ask uh, the person, you know, to, to move around and be comfortable and try out different things, a little curled up or, you know, just different. So you just can experiment and play with, you know, the body in different formations is really what we're, th we're thinking about. Or, you know, and then also think about the body as weight in you know is on a couch or sitting in a chair or you know what is that like yeah and you could do it yourself as well so it's it's trickier but you know do it for front, sure in front of a mirror or something in front like of that. a mirror absolutely mm -hmm. okay cool thanks jordan yeah anyone else other questions we're gonna see um okay that's right we got that okay good Um, anything else, other questions, uh, before we wrap up the morning session? Um, 
I don't know. Um, so we'll be, we'll be meeting up at two and I'll be starting up a, an abstract painting using the material from this morning. Um, Jordan, can I just say something? That sure, was, of course. That was really comprehensive. So, you know, sometimes it's hard talking into a, a yeah. silent um, void there, but it was very con comprehensive and interesting. Oh, great. I got a lot Thank of you, Tracy. Thank yeah. you. That's helpful. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, yeah, this is, you know, this is, this is kind of new, uh, the whole online webinar deal uh, and with the figure, brand new. Haven't done this yet, um, so thank you. And, um, and well, also, you know, uh, things that are working, definitely let me know. That's helpful information for me. Also, things that are not working. If, uh, if you've got some, uh, you know, oh, this wasn't working so well, or, you know, it could be technical or it could be pedagogical, you know, the, the teaching about this, I'd really, that wasn't clear to me. That's fine, just let me know. Or if they're technical things, uh, could we try some more of this or that? That would be helpful too. So all of that is helpful information on my end um, as we go forward. And we're, we've got another, we'll have this afternoon and then, and then another three, three weeks. Jordan? Um, yeah. Jordan. Um, I thought it was really helpful. We didn't have to see the model and your drawing at the same time, but just to see the pose and then yeah. Watch what you were doing was yeah. So I wouldn't worry so much about trying oh. everything in the so screen. Get the right camera angle, the perfect camera angle. <laughs> but being you. able to see what oh that's because if you show us the pose, I can take a screenshot of that. Oh, there you go. And then you know just look at there that on my phone for reference because oh. then I can watch what you're doing. Oh sweet. Yeah. So okay. anyhow. But this is very good. Thank you. And that's helpful much. information for everyone, what you just said. They can yeah. take a screenshot and then work with it. Yeah. Great. So thank you. But the, yeah, every, I agree with Tracy. Everything's very comprehensible, Sweet. very, Sweet. very well thought out. Thank you. That's nice to hear. Okay. Well, have a good lunch and uh, a little uh, afternoon rest. And we'll be back in a couple of hours and um, uh, start up a painting. Okay. Is it going to be the same Zoom number this afternoon? Everything. Yes. It's all. That's okay. all the same. Good. Same link all the way through. Okay. Okay, everybody. Take care, and Bye. we'll see you in a couple hours. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.